guys, it's Scout at Make It Sweet, and today we're going to make Valentine's Day themed hot cocoa bombs. They're gonna be so cute. So let's get started. All right guys, I got my apron on and I'm ready to go. So let's talk about what materials we're going to need. And one of the things that you guys probably don't just have laying around is some of these silicone molds. Um, these I just got off Amazon. They're two and a half inch in diameter. They're perfect for hot cocoa bombs. They're just the right size. They fit in a mug. They take up pretty much all the space. These are great. Anyway, link down below. You'll also need some kind of brush. Um, you can use a clean new paintbrush or this is just a silicone brush. Whatever you have will work just fine. You need some good quality melting chocolate. This is just almond bark. Uh, it was in the bag with my milk chocolate, so it's got a little, um, got a little milk chocolate kiss on there. Uh, but any good quality melting chocolate will do fine. You could probably use like a Hershey's bar or something. I probably wouldn't use chocolate chips just because for me anyway, I can never get them to melt down quite as smoothly as I want. So that's the chocolate. Um, I'm gonna try to make these all pink for Valentine's Day once they melt in your mug. So I chose to get white chocolate, hot cocoa mix, but if you weren't going for the all pink thing, you could just use whatever hot cocoa mix you have. You could even make hot cocoa mix. It's super easy, it's just equal parts cocoa powder and brown sugar. So if you have that laying around, you can do that. Sprinkles, of course, for decorating the top. Since I'm going for the all pink, I'm going to use some food coloring in my chocolate. And I've also got some marshmallows because you have to have marshmallows in a hot cocoa bomb. And then just some things to kind of make these cute for later once they're done. I got some Valentine's Day themed cupcake liners. I thought I would just set the cocoa bomb inside the liner and then put it in a bag and maybe tie it up with some cute ribbon and make it a cute, easy, inexpensive gift idea. Um, you'll also need a baking tray of some kind and an extra bowl if you want to melt any separate colored chocolate for drizzle later. And just a sharp knife and some spoons. So, oh, and a microwave, of course, to melt your chocolate. So, let's get to it. Okay guys, let's get started. Um, I went ahead and gave my chocolate a rough chop. It doesn't have to be perfect. These hot cocoa bombs are super forgiving. So we're just gonna go ahead and put about, oh, I'd say three fourths or so of the chocolate into your bowl. Um, you don't wanna put all of the chocolate in because chocolate can be kind of finicky. If you get it too hot, it loses what's called its temper, which just means like the crack when you bite into it. And so if you keep some of your chocolate reserved and after this is melted, we'll add this in and kind of stir it all together, that brings it back to uh, a tempered state. So that's how we'll do that. I'm just gonna go ahead and melt this in my microwave at 30 second increments for probably about two minutes. I'm gonna stir it in between each 30 second round and we'll be right back with some melted chocolate. All right guys, I went ahead and melted my chocolate. It only took about a minute, so that was less time than I thought. You can see that there are still some chunks in there, but that's okay because we're gonna stir it and the heat of the chocolate will help those to melt. So we're gonna go ahead and add in the rest of the chocolate, like I mentioned, and keep stirring and it will just go ahead and melt. Also, you may have noticed, I lined my baking sheet with parchment paper. The only reason for that is so it's easier to clean up. I'm all about saving time cleaning when I can. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, this is melting a little bit. Hopefully I don't have to microwave it again, but I might. We'll just see where it gets us. Um, I'm also going to add some food coloring to this, and sometimes food coloring will actually make chocolate seize. I don't know if you guys have ever had that happen. I definitely have. Um, anything wet, like any water droplets or anything like that will also cause your chocolate to seize up. And it is not fun. So I am gonna use this gel food coloring, which I think will have a little less chance of seizing, but to kind of safeguard it, I'm going to add just a little bit of coconut oil, just a little bit of extra fat. I am hoping that'll help, but we'll find out together, guys. <laughs> Let's see. 
I'm just gonna grab a knife for the coloring part. And of course, pink for Valentine's Day. These are gonna be kind of a little surprise treat for my kiddos, and my daughter loves pink, and I love pink too. So I'm hopeful that once the hot cocoa bomb melts in the cup, the whole drink will just turn pink. We'll see. It's like I said, this is a bit of an experiment. Every time I've made hot cocoa bombs before, I've just used milk chocolate. Actually, I take that back. I did do a white chocolate one once and decorated it like a snowman. It was super cute. I'll see if I can have my video editor add a picture. Okay, so it's nice and pink now. It looks kind of like bubble gum. And it's almost all the way melted. I've got one little hard piece down in here. I'm just gonna keep stirring. I would say that is probably good because those other pieces are just going to continue to melt down. So I've got this hot chocolate bomb mold and look, I even found a pink brush. Isn't that fun? So now I'm just gonna go ahead and coat these with a nice generous coating. Um, you wanna make sure that it's not too thin, especially up around the edges. The first time that I made these, um, I didn't get it thick enough around the edges and I couldn't get the the chocolate out of the mold very easily. And another thing that I've discovered is that two coats of chocolate is for sure what you wanna do. One coat is just too thin and they just crack when you take them out. So we'll do one coat and then we'll pop them in the fridge for like, I don't know, five or 10 minutes maybe until it's kind of set and then we'll give them a second coat. So I'm sure you don't wanna watch me just paint these molds. So we'll come back once that part's all done. All right guys, so I'm almost finished coating these and I just wanted to show you guys a couple of things. Like when I mentioned before, make sure you get a lot of chocolate up around the edges. This is the area I mean. So these have already had two coats and I'm almost out of chocolate. That's why I didn't do all of them. Um, but so just make sure you're really getting it right up there around the edges and you should be good to go. Okay, so I'm gonna pop these in the fridge for just a bit. They're almost all the way set up, but I want them to be um, pretty hard when I try to take them out of the mold so that they don't crack. So anyway, okay, we'll be back in just a few minutes. Okay, so we're back. These have been in the fridge for just a little bit um, and I am ready to take them out of the molds. So the molds are kind of stretchy, which actually really helps when taking them out. So if you just kind of like stretch the mold away from the chocolate, it kind of does most of the work for you. And then I'm just gently pressing on the bottom and it'll just come right out. Look at that. This is way easier than the first time I made these and they just cracked all the pieces. But like I mentioned before, that was before I knew to do two coats. Two coats really makes a big difference. So they pop out just as easy as that. And we'll get them all out of their molds and then we'll start the fun part of filling them up with all the goodies. Whoops, I almost broke that one, but I didn't. Okay, and one thing that you could also do that would make these really fun is that you could put other things in them besides just the hot chocolate mix and the marshmallows. My daughter and I made some around Christmas time and we put chopped up candy canes inside. I even thought the other day, I couldn't find any, but I thought the other day that it would be really fun to put maybe like cherry cordial candy inside these for Valentine's Day. So, you know, like I said, they're pretty flexible and forgiving. You can kind of do whatever you want. So this is the hot chocolate mix that I'm going to use. It's just Lando Lakes. I've had this before, not the white chocolate specifically, but the Lando Lakes brand and it's so yummy. So I'm hoping this one's good too. A little difficult to tear. I'm just gonna cut it open and put it in my bowl. And I'm making quite a few of these, so I think I'm gonna put a couple bags of hot cocoa mix in. Um, when I made these last time, I mentioned a little bit ago that you can totally make your own hot cocoa mix, and that's what I've done before because it's just equal parts cocoa powder and brown sugar. It's pretty easy. Okay, so I'm just gonna spoon some hot cocoa mix in. About that much is plenty. And you only need to spoon it in half of the shells because the other half are going to form the top of your cocoa bomb. So I think I have enough to make eight. So I'll fill four bottom halves. And I have a little extra, we'll just, we'll add a bit more. Okay, now 
Don't forget the marshmallows. We've got to have marshmallows. It makes it so much fun when these open up. I don't know if you guys have seen these. I hadn't seen them until, oh, I don't know, maybe four or five weeks ago. They're so much fun. You just put them in a mug and then you steam some milk or just warm it in the microwave for 30 seconds or so. And then you, ooh, that one has a little chocolate on it already. And then you just um, pour the warm milk right over the top of the hot cocoa bomb and it just kind of explodes. They're so much fun. All right guys, so I'm back. I took this little plate, ooh, it's hot, and just put it in the microwave for a minute. And then I'm going to take a top half, set it on top of the hot plate, and you can kind of see that the chocolate starts to melt just around the rim. You don't need it to be melted very much, just enough so that it can bond with the bottom half. So I'm just being really, really gentle here and I'm just lightly pressing down the two um, edges so that they can bond together with that melted chocolate. And sometimes you'll have a little bit of excess that kind of squirts out. You can use your finger to smooth that or I mean, you don't have to either. They're fine without doing that, but um, anyway, so that's how you join the top and bottom. I'm gonna do it again. The plate cools pretty quickly, so you may need to reheat it if you're making a bunch of these, but hopefully this will do the trick. Okay, so I'm just pressing really lightly. All right, now they're ready to decorate. I did a couple others off camera, so we'll have four all together. So for the decoration part, I mean, you could do really anything with these. Um, I think that I'm going to drizzle mine with some melted white chocolate. First, we gotta get them cleaned up from these little scraps of chocolate that were on the cookie sheet. And then I'm gonna sprinkle them, I don't know, maybe pink, maybe purple, maybe red. I haven't decided yet, maybe a combination of all three. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and melt some more chocolate. Uh, I just have it in a little dish. I'll take a little bit out when I melt it initially like we did last time and then stir them both together. So we'll be back and we will decorate these little guys. Okay, I'm back. I've got a little dish of melted, just plain white chocolate. And we're gonna do some drizzling. Um, one thing I did notice that I wanted to show you guys, one of my hot chocolate bombs has a little bit of a gap right here and that's totally fine, but if you want to, you can take your finger with some of that melted chocolate from your plate and just kind of like patch it up. You have to be careful um, to kind of let the chocolate cool a little bit before you do this, otherwise it'll just make the holes bigger. But it's not a big deal. Um, but just if you wanna fix that, you can do it like that. All right, now let's get to drizzling. If you have a piping bag handy, you can fill it with chocolate and drizzle more, um, I guess in a more specific pattern if you're picky about your drizzle. You could also use a, um, a Ziploc baggie if you wanted to, but I don't know, I'm not too picky about it. So I think a fork works just fine. And it's so much easier than dragging out extra supplies and dirtying extra things. And anyway, so just a little quick drizzle will make them look so cute. And then like I said before, you can put sprinkles on top or not. You could dye this chocolate any color that you wanted. I kind of thought about doing it red for Valentine's Day, but then I thought, nah, because I don't want to um, change the color of the melted hot chocolate drink. So I thought I'd just keep it white. And I'm gonna drizzle both ways because, eh, well, I have a lot of chocolate and I kind of like to drizzle. <laughs> it's fun, right? Okay, so we've got the drizzle done and while it's still nice and I don't know, wet, soft. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and put our sprinkles on and I think I'm gonna stick with pink. I mean, pink is just way too much fun. Okay, so a few, oh my gosh, aren't those so cute? They look like oversized chocolate truffles, <laughs> which is perfect for Valentine's Day, right? So we need a few more sprinkles and these guys will be just about done. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is wait for this chocolate to set up, the drizzle chocolate I mean, and then we're going to get them ready to have them all packaged and ready to gift or surprise your kids or whatever you wanna do with these darling little treats. Okay guys, so before we package these up, I've just gotta show you how cute they are when they kind of like explode into hot cocoa magically in your in your mug. So I went ahead and gave myself a clean sheet of parchment because things were getting a little crazy. Um, so I'm just gonna put 
a bomb right there in a mug and see how nicely these two and a half inch ones fit. They're just the perfect size. Okay, and then I've got a little, um, about a cup full of warm milk here. And by the way, shout out to my BFF Melanie who got me these super cute Lily Pulitzer mugs for Christmas. I thought it was the perfect mug to use in this video. Anyway, back to what we're doing. About a cup of warm milk and we're just going to pour this gently over the bomb. And as the warm milk hits the chocolate, it starts to melt. You see it kind of rotate in there. Okay, that's probably enough milk. So then we'll just kind of watch it go and see how it starts to open up at the seams. And here comes the marshmallows and the lovely white chocolate powder. So I'm just gonna give it a stir. And before we know it, we will have some yummy hot chocolate. And oh my gosh, look how cute and light pink that is. That's exactly what I was hoping it would do. It is adorable, you guys. Oh, I'm so excited. My kids are going to love these. This part right here where you watch the hot chocolate bomb kind of explode is my little guy's absolute favorite thing lately. He just loves it. So hopefully you guys will too. Hopefully your kiddos will think these are as much fun as, as mine think they are. So anyway, that's the hot cocoa bomb experience. Okay, so let's talk about how you could totally make these adorable little gifts really easily. So I've got a Valentine's Day cupcake liner. I got these at Walmart for like less than a dollar, I think. And I'm just going to put the bomb inside one of those and then a little treat bag. We'll drop it inside very gently, of course. And then we'll add a little ribbon and it will just be the cutest little thing. Super cheap, super fun to make and your neighbors or coworkers, kids, Whoever you choose to give these to will just love them. So I've got a cute little piece of red ribbon and I also made this little tag. I just used a paper punch. You don't have to do this part, but I thought it was a little, a little fun thing to add. Um, I'm just gonna punch a hole in the corner of it. It just says hot cocoa bombs. Add warm milk and stir, just so that people know what to do with these. Because not everybody has seen a hot cocoa bomb. They're kind of new. Um, I don't know, I heard somebody say not too long ago that they thought it was a giant uh, truffle, I guess, and that they were glad they didn't just bite right into it because as yummy as these things are, that wouldn't taste very good at all. So, I'm just tying it into a little bow and these will be ready to go. So how cute is this, you guys? This was so quick and easy and fun to make and they're just adorable. So. Make some hot cocoa bombs, post a pic of what you make down in the comments below. I would love to see and have fun with it guys. Happy Valentine's Day. Thanks for watching.